Hello and welcome to this third tutorial on using Encore. In the first tutorial we brought in a series of sequences as timelines ready to use in our project and here they are in our flowchart. And then in the second tutorial we created our own menu image to use with our DVD that was taken from one of our own sequences, an image that we liked that we took to Photoshop, we adjusted, saved it as a PSD, brought it into Encore ready to move forward. Next thing we need to do is create some buttons so that we can actually wire up our project ready to go. So buttons. Again, I'd like you to go to the library area and where it says library you'll see that the first one has got toggle display of menus and the second one has got toggle display of buttons. Click on the toggle display of buttons and you'll see that you've got a whole series of buttons and you can get an idea of what they look like just simply clicking here going up and down. Now there are different types of buttons. Notice what they say. You've got arrow buttons, which are simple arrow buttons, click and play, but you also have one that says arrow one video button. If you click on that, you'll see that you can actually get an image inside the button. Now I'm going to use one of these and I'm going to wire it up so that inside the button we can see the first frame of the timeline that we link it to. So how do I apply a button? Simple. Click, drag and drop. And when it's in there, you'll see it's incredibly small, and I want to make it bigger. Well, I can just grab it and extend it. And there it is. Now, I have four timelines. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to want four buttons. So I can simply take this one, which is now, say, the right size, and duplicate it. So I can either go to Edit, Duplicate, or as you can see, it's Control or Command D. Duplicate it and pull it across. You'll see that when they overlap, you'll get this red mark saying, oh, you can't have it like that. But you can duplicate it and you can move them around to your heart's content and get them into just the right place. And then again, you can duplicate them and select them both. Control or Command D, duplicate and pull them both down. And there I've got four buttons ready to work with. Let go. So now if we look at our flow chart, click on the word flow chart, you'll see that I've got my disk goes in, we've taken it so it goes to the menu, and the menu now has four buttons, one, two, three, four. And what we're going to do is we're going to wire up these buttons to these four timelines. But at the moment, none of the button names make any sense. So what you can do is click on the button, and when you click on the button, you'll see over here you've got properties, it says button. And at the moment, the name of the button is Scene 1. Well, just for instance, let's say the first one's got to be called Counting Money. So where it says Scene 1, select it and put Counting. I'm not sure that Counting Money will fit in. And if you don't think they're going to fit in, what you need to do is go to the second tab where it says Character, and you can change the font and the font size and all those bits and pieces in there. Anyway, I've got Counting in there. It clearly says Counting. So how do I wire it up? Simple. You go to the end of the button, and can you see next to the cursor, you've got that sort of little squiggle. That's the pick whip. You can click and drag the pick whip and then take it down to the orphaned item down in the orphanage. Bear in mind these items at the bottom which aren't connected to anything are called orphans. And the area of screen is called the orphanage. Let go. And now it's linked up. So we put our DVD in. The menu comes up. Button 1, which is called Counting, will go to the timeline called Counting Money. And if we just look at our menu, click back on the menu button, you'll see that the first frame of that timeline is actually showing inside the video button. Really helpful. So what do we do with the next one? Well, simple. This second button that at the moment says scene one is going to be money in tin. So I'm going to select that over here, properties for the button, highlight where it says scene one, which is the old name for it, and just put money in tin. And then click away and you can see it's already changed to money in tin and then click at the end with the pick whip, click, drag and drop it on that item and that's now wired up and you can see that we've got one going to counting, the second one going to money in tin, the third one's going to be selling house, click on it, go to the button properties over here and call it selling house and then at the end of that with the pick whip, click, drag and drop and there you go, we've got three of them done. I'm going to expand this a little bit so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. And the last one, where again it still says scene one, actually says wallet contents. So click on that. Again, we've got the properties for the button. So we can go over the old name and we can write the new name in. 
wallet contents hit return and there we go wallet contents is on that button and then we can click drag drop and there we have the disk goes in the menu comes up four buttons are selectable each one will play a different timeline let's just go back to our menu and see what it looks like that looks okay we've got the first frame of all four of the timelines in here giving an indication of what's going to play however this is not completed if I look at the flowchart you'll see that what's going to happen is the disks going to go in the menu is going to come up you're going to click to a timeline what happens when it gets to the end of the timeline at the moment if I click on any one of these you'll see that now under properties it's the timelines property so whatever you have selected under properties panel it'll tell you up here what it is it's telling us the name of it we can add a description but underneath here it says end action it's not set now what you can do is you can click and drag from here or you can set it with this drop down but again I think working the flow chart is definitely the best way of doing this I'm going to expand it even more what happens when it gets to this is I want it to go back to my menu so I click drag and go back to the menu and let go and now it's showing me the disk is going in the menus coming up with my buttons if I click on the counting button I'm gonna get the counting timeline when the counting timeline finishes I'm gonna go back to my menu and I can do that for the other ones so at the end of this money in tin click drag back to there and again here click drag back to there I'm not going to do the last one because I want to demonstrate what happens if you haven't quite got something sorted out and how you can find out if you've missed something and how to build your project in the next tutorial thanks for watching Thank mm -hmm. you.